To find the examples for scripting, you can go to help, find examples, and then from there, we're going to go to programmatically controlling BIs. And then we are going to go to editing and inspecting BIs. So this is the section that has all the shipping examples for BI scripting. If you choose any of them, they have a description on the right. The first one that I'm going to be showing you is adding objects. So we're going to open that. It has a nice description on what is it that you're going to be doing. And what you can see here is that on the block diagram, what we're doing is obtaining a reference to the target BI that's done with this BI. And again, this BI got added when you enable scripting and the palette of BI scripting was added. So that's the new BI. I'm going to leave that here so we can refer back to it. Then we create a property node that gives you, that gets uh, the connection directly to the BI rectum. So since nothing is connected, this is going to create a new BI. And then we just say where in the, in the, in the monitor we want to find that BI. And we have a list here of all the different functions that we could be adding. So in this case, we're just adding a subtract function. And we create the new object, which is this BI over here, and then just close our references. So if I run this BI, what I end up with is, let me close the palette, it's a block diagram with a subtract function, function in it. If I were to select something else, like let's say, well, string to IP, and I run that, I get a string to IP. Okay, so we're going to go to drop add function inside a while loop. So here it is. This allows you to see nested functions. So what happens if I want to put an add function just like the example says? So let me show you the palette so we can have it as a reference. I'm going to put it here. So we have the new VI, which is this guy here. We get the properties. We figure out where we want the bounds to be for the front panel. And then we create a while loop and you see here that I have uh, different options on the while loop. More than likely we'll see in a minute, but I think this is probably the um, terminal um, for either continue or stop. And then we create that and then we say we are going to take the reference to the while loop and within that while loop we're going to be dropping the, um, the ad. And basically what we're doing is here we're just saying the block diagram but the inside of the while loop is like another diagram. That's why we're getting that new reference. So if I run this, I get my while loop with the and inside of it. Let's look at using traverse. So the traverse function is going to be very useful because it lets you select or get the reference for different items that are already on the front panel or the block diagram. So when I create, uh, when I open this VI, you're going to see that is looking for a test using Traverse BI. So let's find where that BI is located at. So if I go to BI properties, I can see that this BI is in this folder. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to go file open because I know that this is like a relative pad. So I'm going to put the pad that I created. So I'm going to go and look. I know that it's on finding and modifying objects and the name of the BI is test using Traverse. So I'm going to open that BI and what you're going to see here is that I have, you know, my for loop and a constant and certain elements here. So let me uh, close it and we're going to run it. And sure enough, I get a description of all the objects that you saw on that block diagram. So if I open it again, so if I open the test using Traverse, okay, so you'll see that we have there our list of uh, elements. So you have all the objects and then you have only the Traverse for the for loop itself. So you can see the for loop, you have that, you have the other terminal. Um, there's two diagrams. So there's the diagram within the while loop and the diagram within the for loop. That's how we know that we have two uh, diagrams. And you can see how this is done. Uh, what we're doing is we're looking on the second option, we're looking for just the stuff within the uh, for loop. This one is transversing for everything on the block diagram. Now, I could also put something on the front panel. And of course, I'm not going to save any of this, but I could, you know, put a numeric control, for example, here. 
and now say instead of doing the block diagram show me the front panel so if I run that now it's going to just show for the uh, traverse all it has the panel the pane and then the digital and the text so it's the text that you're seeing here and the digital so if I put um, I don't know let's see what else can we put if I put um, a button Okay, so if I put a button and I run this again, sure enough, it shows there that there's a Boolean now and the digital. And if I remove the digital and I run again, that goes off the list. All right, example that I'm going to show you that's useful for when you're doing quick drop shortcuts or, um, yeah, basically quick drop shortcut, shortcuts. Normally those apply to a selection of code so what we're going to do is we're going to go and look for the get all selected objects so if i go to get all selected objects what you'll see is that it will wait for me to select something so it tells you to open the test selection list target vi so let's find that out where that is oh, actually I, I can access it directly by using this as a shortcut so this is a test selection list so if I select everything and I run the BI, it lists everything that I'm selected. If I only select the string within the cluster and then I run the BI, it only highlights the string. So it's a very straightforward. You get the BI reference and then you say, you just show me everything that's selected. Now, I could have also done it from the block diagram. So if I select these guys and I run, then it tells me the cluster, the boolean, the numeric, and the string. If I only select the random generator, um, it's there. So I probably was selecting something else. There we go, run. Oh, I guess it's, uh, it, it shows also the string even if it's not selected. So if I just select these three guys, I get the random number, the boolean, the number, and the string. All right? So again, very uh, uh, straightforward, but these are the basics you need in order, or the foundation in order to build more complex tools. So I invite you to check out the rest of the shipping examples. They have very good explanations in the front panel and there are comments and uh, good luck.